Hey, what is up? For um, Christmas, I got a hoverboard, which is not blowing up. Thank you very much. Um, and I wanted to show you a tutorial on how to use it. Um, there's some points I want to show you, and I want to kind of show you how to write it and what the components are. Let's hop straight. So this is my hoverboard. Uh, I've, as you can see, it's green and it has all the basic components. My friend has a hoverboard um, brand called Hoverboard 360 and he has, and I'll put the link in the description below. Um, so let me just turn it on. So here we go. This is the power source. So what this does is once, if this is green just like this, it that means that this is fully charged or it's more than 50%. But if this is blinking, then it is at 50% or lower. But if it's red, you should stop riding it and charge it straight away, but make sure to don't, make sure to not overcharge it or it will catch on fire and um yeah so first off what you can what you and then well once you get on this light will either turn red or green so let me just hop on here all right let me, let me get my footing see this is green that means it's self-balanced but let me just roll it over here that means you can get on but let me just roll it and then so see this that means it's rolled and you need to recalibrate it which is really easy well it's kind of recalibrating really recalibrating is technically taking it into the shop so and then you can just turn it off and turn it back on and that's the easiest thing to do pretty much um so, so yeah. if you are a new person and you just got your hoverboard and you didn't read the manual yet and you just turned it on, you're probably wondering there how I turned it on. Um, these two, these two things are the charge port and the power button. So the one on your left will be the power button. You can just press that. And then it will turn it on and then again you can just press it and it'll turn it off. And then this is the charging port. Um be careful with this. This is really easily bent. And I've already bent it and I've had to fix it, but now it's fine. And that's the reason why I have the tape. I'm not sure why I have it here. It was because well, I don't really want the tape to get the um Hoverboard to get scratched up, but the main reason why I have it right here is because this charging port sticks out right there, and if that bends, you can't charge it, and it will be a pain in the boot. Hey, that sounded weird, but yeah, that's just basically how you turn it on and charge it. And actually, I'm going to show you how to charge it now. Um. Yeah, let's hop so, straight into that. You can see my charger right there and then my hoverboard here. So when you want to charge your hoverboard, you need to make sure it is turned off. Pro I haven't done this, but I wouldn't plug it in while it's on. Probably not a good idea. It's no, no. And then how you do it, and, and this is with my hoverboard. I don't know about others. You can stick it in. So what you're supposed to do is, let me just put that there. So what you can do is right here, and this is very, you should just plug it in here. It might just take you a couple times to fit it just right. So there, and then, so 
you want to make sure that you put the charger into the hoverboard before you plug it into the wall so you don't break a fuse. So then all you have to do next is take this, stick it into the wall, and then your hoverboard is charging. So as you can see, my light is red, which means it's not fully charged. But once this turns green light, that, then your hoverboard is fully charged. So for what I got to show you um, in the first couple scenes is make sure this is in the front. As you guys have probably seen on videos, people riding it like this. For this company, it's not like that. Um, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I totally spaced it. My company is Swagway and mine is The Racer. And I'll put your their link down in the below. And I can't find the Hoverboard 360 link. Um, I'll try to find that. And if I can find it while I'm making the video, I'll just put it down in the description. And I guess I lied twice. So, just, so I'm just going to turn it on. So, the hard part about this is, my opinion, getting off, but for my dad over there, sitting over, just right over there, he tried to do this and he fell really bad and almost broke a rocket I got. So, you want, so when you step on, you want to make this light green right here, right on the left. That light right here wants to be green just like this. Never mind. There we go. And you can't get on a steep incline. And when you're getting on, you want to not try to wibble wobble or you will fall off. And that took me a while to get. But once you get on, um, you're ready to go. But the first time I got on, don't think you're bad once you first get on. If you fall off or you're really wobbly like this because that's how I was and it's hard to um, get the sensitivity on these things. So now you're ready to go with your hoverboard and that is basically the tutorial but I need to show you a couple more things. Some pe Like I said, some people get onto this and it's more sensitive here in the front when you turn. So if you get on backwards, it'll feel like you can turn back more, not forward more. Which it feels weird, but I'm going to show you a video of me just riding through my house. Which is really fun. And I, my friend has a GoPro and I'm jealous because I want a GoPro so I can shoot videos. Okay, so... Basically, now it's just the video in three, two. This is kind of me riding around my house, but I'm kind of in my ro living room. And let me just squeeze through here. Yes, very graceful. So first, oh yes, gosh, I forgot. So basically riding around the house is pretty easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's really fun. And what you need to do is you need to be really careful. And how's you? And this is how you can be really, really careful on. Okay, your guys. One more thing. These strips here, I think I said, come with the thing. It's to protect about here so they don't get scratched up. And now to the video of me riding around the house. You should always wear a helmet, but I'm not wearing a helmet because I'm not outside, and I only have to wear a helmet outside, but I think it's a good rule. So when you step off, which is the hardest part for me, do not step off forward like this. I always lean forward, but you should step off back, and it just takes a little practice. And one more thing about this you've probably seen in hoverboard fail videos you should never when you're about to fall off don't try to recover you're always going to make it worse and you're always going to fall off 
just like what my dad did and I might have told you that earlier I did but I told you he fell off but I didn't tell you that he tried to recover and with you when you're tr about to fall off don't try to recover because you're just gonna make it worse and that's how people do this and fall off so what you so if you're about to fall off just like do that and fall off don't try to recover and then flip back and hit your head nobody likes a hospital nobody likes a hospital visit the first day you get your hoverboard and that's all about it for the video and i will see you guys in the next one <coughs> make sure to like subscribe and don't forget to share the video thank you